On May 1984, Jane underwent a brain procedure after she had been hearing voices in her head for the past couple of months. So on the early month of 1984, Jane was casually reading books and just chilling in her living room when all of a sudden she hears this agitating grating. Sorry. Um, when all of a sudden she hears this noise and this voice and she looks around and there's no one besides just the wind blowing outside the window and she thought to herself i must have imagined that there's no way i just heard that it's probably all in my head and then she went back to reading her books until the silence was broken once again jean looks around and no one was there besides her and her thought and this time jane couldn't brush this one off and and as time passed the voice increases and she finally sought for help. The doctors took note of the voices and did several examinations. After that, they found a tumor which was exactly where the voice said they would be. This is her story. Do by 1159. Hello everyone, welcome to Do at 1159. I'm your host, Susie, and our co-host is down here with us. She's going to be here and there every once in a while throughout this podcast. Before I get started, all sources will be in the descriptions and if you guys are listening to this podcast, then um, the sources will be in the YouTube descriptions. But yeah, let's get started. So we don't know her name exactly, but for this episode, we will be calling her Jane. Um, so Jane was born around the 1940s and she settled in Britain in the late 60s. Now she lived a normal life, worked, got married, and started family, and then settled down to fully commit as a housewife and a mother. And that was the typical lifestyle in the 1900s, and there's nothing abnormal about it. She lived, she, she lived a normal life. And she rarely went to the hospital because she was healthy overall and her children were in good health. So there was really no reason for her to seek help or seek medications or anything like that. In the winter of 1984, snow was falling and the wind shook the tree. Jane was at home just reading casually and chilling until she heard a voice in her head. Please don't be afraid, the voice said. I know it must be shocking for you to hear me speaking to you like this, but this is the easiest way I can think of. My friend and I used to work at the Children's Hospital, Great Armand Street, and we would like to help you. Jane has heard of the Children's Hospital, but she has never been there. And there was really no reason for her to visit that hospital since her children were well. She thought to herself, I must be, I must be imagining this. And she looks around, there's no one, and she was a bit scared, you know, a little bit paranoid, because really, what the hell was that? But she went back to reading. After reading for several minutes, the voice intervened again. The voice stated, To help you see that we are sincere, we would like you to check out the following. They proceeded to tell her three key informations that she needed to know. According to Jane, she didn't know about them at that time, and so she checked to see if the voices were legit, and it was true. The article never specified what the three informations were, but that's what Jane said. Now, Jane concluded that... I think she tooted. Oh my god, huddles. Now, Jane concluded that she must have just been going crazy, and she started panicking. And honestly, I feel her, because, I mean, who wouldn't be going crazy and panicking if they start hearing voices and telling them informations that they never knew that turned out to be legit? The voices told Jane that she needed to seek a doctor, and so that's exactly what she did. She went to her doctor, who was, I'm going to butcher her name or their name, um... Ikechuku Obialo Azuonye. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say their name is Ike for now on just to simplify it. But anyways, this doctor is a consultant psychiatrist. So Ike saw Jane at the clinic and after several examinations and just analyzing her symptoms, they diagnosed Jane with functional hallucinatory psychosis. And um, pretty much this is a rare phenomenon and it's a hallucinations that's triggered by the stimulus in the same modality. So pretty much if someone hears something like the fan blowing, then they would start hearing voices. There's one for like vision where, you know, if they see something, then they start seeing another thing. 
it's stated that the brain may trigger them to see something else. Now the treatment for this is an antipsychotics. This pretty much alters the brain chemistry, which reduces the psychotic symptoms, um, but it doesn't work for everyone else. In fact, there was a man who worked as a workday at a factory and they had two years of auditory hallucination, um, delusions, social withdrawal, and occupational impairment. They also had sign of OCD. And they were treated with risperidone, which is a psychosis medication, and also fluxetine, which was an antidepressant. However, even after those medications, they continued to experience auditory hallucination at work, and so they were prescribed a sodium valparate, which is an anticonvulsant medicine or an anti-epileptic medicine, which prevents seizure and reduces excess electrical activity in the brain. And pretty much ions are used to communicate with one another in the brain and the charges are changed based on whether the neuron is rest or sending signals. And so when he's given the sodium valparate, it just reduces all of that ion work. We don't really understand or fully understand how the medicine works, but it works. You get prescribed Jane with a theoridazine, which is a low potent typical antipsychotic drug. And you know, the voice disappeared inside her head for a couple of weeks, but it soon came back. But before it came back, Jane had went on a vacation abroad for the holiday and also to celebrate the voices being gone, but the voice returned. And at this time she was still taking the drug and the voice pretty much told her to return to England immediately and that something was wrong with her and she needed an immediate treatment. So Jane began overthinking and she believed that this was probably another delusional effect. After coming back to London, Jane immediately went to Ike regarding the voices that had returned and Ike reassured Jane that it was probably in her mind and there's nothing to be scared about. The voice had given Jane an address and to calm Jane down, Jane's husband drove her to the address and it took her to a computerized tomography department of a large London hospital or a CT scan department. CT scans, as we all know, is used to obtain detailed internal images of the body. Now, once she was there, the voice directed Jane to go inside and have her brain scan for two reasons. One because she has, or according to the voices, she has a brain tumor and her brain stems were inflamed. Now, Jane was starting to believe the voices because, you know, considering all the stuff in the past and all the stuff that had came true, there was no reason for her to doubt the voices. And so she went over or went back to Ike and told Ike about this. Now, Ike believed her and wanted to, you know, better help her and so Ike requested a brain scan to just reassure Jane. Now Ike did not find any physical signs that suggested a intracranial space occupying lesions or any signs that showed that there was a foreign particle or a tumor inside her brain that was taking up the space. But Ike still went ahead and requested for a brain scan just so that they could help Jane better. Now the request was initially declined because they stated that there was no reason to put Jane under a future risks such as a cancer because CT scan do expose individuals with more radiation and it's very dangerous if it's used for many times or a long time. And Iga's claim of hallucination was not enough to justify Jane getting a CT scan. The people who were doing the review also stated that Iga was probably overdoing it because why is Iga believing a patient with a hallucinatory voice? Like they should not, Iga should not be going overboard for this. I was kind of, I was kind of mad for Iga. Like what the fuck? Who says that? Which I guess I understand where they're coming from, but like still. It's a little harsh. But Iga continued to fight for Jane and after multiple just interactions by April, Iga finally won the battle and Jane was able to get a CT scan. Initially, they couldn't find anything with the first one. It wasn't very clear, but they could tell that something was there. Now, in May, they did another scan for Jane and it revealed a posterior 
posterior frontal paraphalcine mass, which is a growth of tumor at the back of the frontal lobe of the brain near the midline where the brain meets. Our brain, there's two brains, I guess, um, that connects. And so the midline is the middle line and the frontal lobe is the brain part that's in front of our head or the or near the forehead. Um, and so they also noticed that it extended through the fox to the right side. So the tumor pretty much dug into the membrane to the right side of the brain. And it looked like a mangioma, which is a common type of tumor that could present at the brain. Some article states that it's not a brain tumor, while other article states that mangioma is a brain tumor. But yeah, that's that's for y'all to debate with yourself and see what you all consider. In addition to that, it's a abnormal mass of tissue that grew from the membrane that surrounds the brain and the spinal cord mengen, meninges and it grows slowly throughout the year. And so a lot of patients sometimes don't even know that they have mangioma. Now, the consultant surgeon that Ike had referred Jane to, who was doing the test, stated that there was no headache or focal neurological deficit related to the mass that Jane was experiencing. However, the doctor still went over the pros and cons of doing an operation right now or just wait for the symptoms to appear later on with Jane and her husband. But And they both agreed to do an immediate operation. And Jane's voices agreed with that decision as well, which is, yeah, that's very interesting that that happened. On May 1984, the operation was started and they went in to remove the mangioma. They made an incision on the skin that covered both the side of the forehead and removed the frontal lobe bone of the skull crossing the midline. Now they saw that the mangioma was about 2.5 by 1.5 inch coming from the fox and extending out. Some of the tumor was found on inner surface of the brain. Even with that, the surgeon successfully removed the entire tumor, including the part that came from the fox. Jane woke up from the operation and the voices told her, We are pleased to have helped you. Goodbye. After the operation, Jane peacefully recovered with no issues. They also took her off the antipsychotic medication after the operation immediately, but they did prescribe her with dexamethasone, which um, she would, you know, take half every four days um, until she doesn't need to take any more. And dexamethasone is pretty much a type of steroids to treat inflammation, severe allergies, asthma, and other stuff like that. And then they also prescribed her with prophylactic anticonvulsant, which was to control the electrical brain energy that pretty much prevents seizures. After that procedure, the voices never returned. And there were a lot of debates about this when the... Um, article was published by Ike. So Ike mentioned that this was the first case that they had worked with with a patient that had a voice assisting them to pretty much get better. Now there are three type of I guess groups that kind of are justifying or explaining Jane's solution. The first type is called the X-Files and they say that what happened to Jane was a telepathic communications from two people who found Jane's tumor and wanted to help somehow. Which I don't know if I totally believe that, but you know, some people do. The other type is exphobes, and they're pretty much people that say that Jane had been given a diagnosis of the brain tumor before and she just wanted to get a free healthcare. Now that doesn't fucking make sense because Jane lived in Britain for 15 years and she had free health care, and so she was eligible for the health care that was provided by the government. In addition to that, Jane also wanted the voice to be gone, so that's kind of confusing. It just doesn't really prove their point. Now, there's the last group which believe that because the tumor was really, really large, um, it likely had an impact on her somewhere or another, and so she likely felt it and was scared and... Because of that fear that formed, it forced her to hallucinate the voices. And they also believe that she may have unconsciously heard about the information that the voices had given her and which is proven correctly when she tested those 
um, information out. Um, and that pretty much would explain why she knew some of the locations of the hospitals and other stuff like that. Now this would also explain why the voices left because Jane was finally relieved that the treatment was done and the tumor was gone. So that's the debate that people are having. Um, but I want to hear what you guys think. Do you think, do you believe in any of those theories? Um, personally, I feel like the last one is most probable. Um, but you know, the brain is an interesting thing and it works in an interesting way. I hope you guys like this episode and if there's anything or any other cases that you guys want me to cover, just let me know in the description or in the comment. But yes, yeah, that is all for today's episode and I hope to see you guys on the next one. Bye!